This just might be the greatest entry level 3D printer ever made. Welcome to the Outlaw Effect. Before we get started, if you want to check out this machine or any of the other ones I talk about, I'll link them in the description and the pinned comment to help you find them easier. Let's do this. I'm a very new user to 3D printing. I consider myself a very basic beginner. So take this advice as someone who's very new to this and what their thoughts are using 3D printers. I bought this Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon about six or seven months ago and I've been using it a decent amount since then. But I recently bought this new A1 Mini because it was so well priced, I thought, man, I've got to try it and see what it's like because it is different than the X1. And we'll get into some of those differences later. But first, we should unbox it. Straight out of the box, this thing is extremely well packaged. It, that's what I found with my other X1 Carbon was it was very well packaged. I like that they take the time and the care to package things. One thing to note when you're unpacking this, there is a plastic piece that's on this upper arm that's just for shipping. And if you just look at this, you don't know that. It really looks like part of the machine, but you do have to take that off or it won't work properly or at all. Overall, I, I like the design of these Bamboo Labs uh, printers. I've bought both of these and have been pleased with the one behind me. And I'm hoping that this one will work just as well. All right, this thing is setting up or it's calibrating. And what's one of the one things I've really enjoyed about the Bamboo Labs as somebody who has never used 3D printers before. That one back there, the X1 was extremely easy to set up. This one was even easier. Literally just a few parts to put on there with some screws that come with it. They are individually labeled too, so you're not gonna get those confused. And then once you get that up, you're gonna have an app on your phone called the Bamboo Handy app. You'll log in with your credentials or create an account and it will really sync this printer or any of your printers up to that app. And you can either use your phone or your computer to send files to this machine over your Wi-Fi. So it makes it so, so easy. So right now this thing is gonna self calibrate. And that's one of the things about these Bamboo Lab 3D printers from what I can gather from my research is they auto calibrate so that you don't have to worry about the bed being unlevel or anything like that. So they really, really are beginner friendly. And it's why I keep buying them myself. I'm not sponsored by Bamboo Labs. I've just, this is the ones I've researched and bought and think they're probably the best on the market at this point. We'll let this finish calibrating. It's gonna take a few minutes. All right, got it set up and it's printing the first part. I'm printing a small parts tray as the first test print just to see how this thing's gonna go. And so far, I like what I see. It's working really well. The Bamboo Labs uh, 3D printers are known to be very fast compared to the competition. I really like they included this touch screen on there. Gives you other information like the temperature that it's running at and a few other things that you can look in just a quick glance and see. One thing I didn't do when I first set it up was you have to tell it to load the filament. I forgot to do that. And literally all you have to do is touch filament on screen and then click load. Once you have it threaded through this pipe, it just pulls it in automatic. It's very simple. Another impressive thing is, can you hear it? It's a light fan is all you hear. It's very quiet. It's much quieter than the Bamboo X1 Carbon that I have over there. I like that. All right, the print is done. We can just hit repeat or reprint and it will print another one of those if we want. It took a little less than an hour and a half. We can click okay or we can report problems if we need to. So if I was wanting to remake these multiple times over, literally just take this off and hit reprint and we're back to the races. These little plates do pop right off. You can kind of bend up on it and then you take your part off. Pretty cool little small parts tray. I like that. One thing I was impressed with both machines is how well packed they are, as you saw. And then the X1 was also equally as well packed. And what really impresses me about this new A1 Mini is the setup time. About 10 minutes, max. From the time you take it out of the box until you add a couple of pieces and take off the shipping bracket, you're ready to go. Especially if you have the Bamboo Handy app already downloaded and logged in, you scan the QR code and you're up and going. You're ready to roll. Now, I've been printing with this thing for about two and a half days now pretty much every waking hour. I've been printing all kinds of stuff. I printed all the small parts boxes on this mini. I also printed this little man lift type thing and it printed in place, which is extremely impressive. It printed just like this. And when I took it off, the wheels rolled. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to put anything together. And this articulating riser or vice that makes it go up and down just worked right off the printer. I also printed a dust adapter for my DeWalt table saw to reduce down to the Festool. And that's one of the things I've been so impressed with as a newcomer to 3D printing is how accessible it is. Because when I first got my CNC, it was a steep learning curve. I struggled, I, I messed up bits, I broke stuff, I tore up wood, you know, I had to throw stuff away. This hasn't been the case in either one of these 3D printers and especially this A1 Mini. It's literally plug and play. 
And if you've never used a 3D printer, you can rest easy knowing that it's not hard. And their software is very intuitive. I prefer to use it on the computer, but you could also use your phone with the app. One thing I like is how many files are available to people like me who doesn't know how to design. I don't have any experience in design software coming up with different designs and things, but I have been able to take other people's designs and print those for my personal use. And so like the pack out inserts, I've been able to make tons of those to organize my tools. And with this one, I've been able to make different parts and pieces for stuff around the shop. And the speed of these things, I was way off on that when I first got the X1. I thought, man, this thing's kind of slow. And then the people in the comments was like, man, you have no idea. That thing you just took three hours to print would have taken 12 hours on the competitor's models. So these are very fast printers and you literally do nothing. You turn it on, you send the file to it and it starts printing. It self levels the bed so you don't have to tinker with that. I'm not a person who wants to go in and tinker with all this stuff. I just want it to make things and that's what it's good at. Now I had the choice to either buy the one with the AMS or just a single roll. Now because I already have the AMS system with the X1 Carbon, I didn't necessarily need multicolor printing with this printer. I think if you're trying to set up like a small production line or anything like that, this would be the perfect way to go. Or if you've never had a 3D printer and you're not sure how much you're gonna use it or how well you're gonna be able to use it or how easy it really is, no matter how much I tell you it's easy, you just wanna try it for less than $300. You can pick this one up and get a roll of filament for about 20 something dollars. That's all you need. When you get those two things, filament and this printer, you can print day one. 10 minutes after you get it unboxed, you're printing something that you've already loaded or that you find on the internet. There's a few things that I've really been impressed with with this machine overall over the last few days. One, the touch screen is very responsive. It's kind of small. I don't know, it's a couple of inch touch screen, but it's easily readable from me who has not the greatest eyesight. I wear contacts or glasses, but I'm able to see this screen and it's very responsive. When you touch something, it activates it and it goes to the next screen. Now the screen refresh rate's a little bit slower than say your iPhone or something like that, but the responsiveness when you touch something, it works well. And speaking of that, even though it is a smaller screen, when you touch that item, there's no like mistouching, like it's not jumping all over the place. Even some of the icons are really small, but when you touch that general area, it knows intuitively what you're touching. And on this touch screen, you can manipulate this machine in a variety of ways. You can uh, mess with the heat settings if you so choose. I don't, but you can. You can also change the speed settings, which I did do. I uh, changed on a print recently where I changed it from uh, normal speed to faster to ludicrous speed. I didn't see any print difference or quality difference in it. It just sped up. So, but some people recommend that you kind of just leave it setting at the normal speed, which is typically what I do. One thing I like about this A1 Mini is it come with a textured plate. And I had no idea that meant anything when I got the X1 Carbon, but someone suggested that I get a textured plate so I didn't have to mess with those glue sticks. Because if you don't know, on other type plates, you're recommended that you should put these uh, glue stick on there to make your parts stick uh, initially when you start printing. The texture ones, you don't need to do that. They just stick. And speaking of sticking, this is a metal plate and this is a metal base with a magnet. So when you set it on there, it just snaps into place. One thing I didn't realize when I got this one is it has a camera, much like the X1 Carbon. The X1 Carbon has a better camera, uh, more frames, a better quality camera, but this one does have a camera right here on the side and the light. And you can cover that up with that little switch if you don't like the camera being there, but it does have that camera so you can live monitor it, which I do from my computer. In the house, this thing will be out here working and I can just log in and look at it and see what's going on. Make sure it's still working. Make sure there's no problems. And it does record a time lapse for you so you can play it back so you can see your part being made in a time lapse form. That is so cool. I also like that they included this little, it looks like an eye almost or a little wheel inside there. And when it's working, you'll see it moving. And that just lets you know that this filament is being pulled through there because sometimes it's moving so slow, you really don't even see this spool moving. This is wirelessly controllable or wired control. You can um, plug it into a landline or what I do is I just use it over my internet. So I'm able to start this from inside the house. I can start a project so long there's no other project already here. And then it'll just start printing and I don't even have to get up. Uh, it just comes out, it just starts working. And I really do like that fact. When you get your machine, it comes with everything you need other than the filament, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But it does come with some maintenance items too. There's very little maintenance on these machines and that's one of the things I really appreciate is I don't have to mess with it a bunch. But it does come with a little bit of grease and oil and things so that you can keep it operating properly and it'll pop up on the screen when it's time to put that stuff on there. Or at least the X1 Carbon does, which I really appreciate because 
we don't remember that kind of stuff much. One thing I really like about this machine is the footprint. It is so small. It, it's kind of beefy for what it is. Like it, it's dense, it's, it weighs a decent amount, which is good because it sits on the table. It's not gonna scooch around as this table is flicking and moving when it's starting to print stuff. And to watch something print on these is just pure joy. You just sit there and watch that thing come to life. It's just unreal that we are living in this time where something at this price point can create things that you can literally find some of the most useful things around your house to help you get organized or to just make extra parts and pieces for stuff that you didn't have, like the dust adapter. Or I've made charging stands. I've made SD card holders. I printed a holder for my Nintendo Switch games. Like there's so much you can do with these things. It's absolutely unreal. Now, one of the downsides to the A1 Mini is this print area. You're basically getting about a seven inch by seven inch by seven inch print area. In other words, seven squared and high. That can be a bummer, especially if you're wanting to print stuff like these pack out inserts or larger items, they just won't fit on this bed. And if you shrink them to fit, then they're not going to fit in the pack out. So then you would need to step up to the P1P, the P1S, or even the X1, X1 Carbon. But all of those have just over a 10 inch by 10 inch by 10 inch printing area. That really does open up a world of possibilities for you with that larger print area, but you will pay for that extra print space. One thing that surprised me about this machine is that it's quiet. It is super quiet and it does have a fan on there that will run when it's operating and then you hear the, the machine moving around. But the X1 is a little bit louder, not, a, not terribly loud. It's not uh, something that would keep you up at night if it was in a room across the way. But this one, in the same room, it's very quiet. In the next room over, you'll never hear it. I mean, it is so, so quiet. That's one thing I've been impressed with with this little thing. I just, I don't know, I like this little buddy. He's my little buddy. A neat feature on these machines, especially if you have the AMS, if you go with the four spool AMS where you get multicolors, when you open your software and you sync it, you click sync filaments, it'll, it'll sync whatever colors you've got in there. It just knows. I don't know how it knows, but it knows what colors are there. For instance, back here, I have green, purple, and red. When I sync it, it knows that it, those three colors are there and there's one empty spot. So when I'm starting to print something, I can change the colors of things and create a multicolored print and then it just knows. It's so cool. The same way if I'm using a single roll here, if I change the color of this, I resync it on the app. It's literally just a button that says resync. It'll know what color is in there. Oh, awesome. What that does is in real time on the app or on the computer app, it shows you what color the part's going to be when it prints. I like that. And speaking of the size restriction, when I was talking about printing these little buckets for small parts organization, I printed the little buckets on the A1. I was able to print multiples at one time, which is really cool. But the big box that it stays in, I had to print on the X1 because it is just slightly over that seven inch cutting area. So the X1 it was for this one. One thing that really surprised me about 3D printing as I've been getting into it over the last couple of months is the ease of use of these machines specifically. I've heard others have a little more trouble on different models or different brands, but these have been plug and play. One thing that really I really love is how many free and or paid, but mainly free files are available for you to just print. They're all over the internet. Bamboo Labs has their own website. I think it's their website, but it'll load directly into the Bamboo Lab app when you open the file. Or you can do look at Thingiverse or Printables and they're just available. Just people, good people, just uploading their files to these websites and you're able to download those and use those for personal use. Now I wouldn't recommend you getting somebody's file and start selling that product. That would be kind of shady. I wouldn't do that. If you're just gonna print something like this for your own personal use or enjoyment, this is what I love about this 3D printing community because they are so, so giving with their skills and their knowledge. Now I was able to print this AMS stand back here on this X1 because someone uploaded it to one of these websites. Now I did throw them a little money for donation because that is such an intricate piece, but a lot of these files are just free and you can do that. Now the pack out inserts, I did buy those from Jonah Pope's Designs, no affiliation. I just think he's doing a really good job designing some really cool product. And so I was able to buy those and download those and print those. I don't have to know how to design this stuff. I don't know how, I don't have to know Fusion 360 or any other of these CAD programs. I can literally just find the file online. They sell them on Etsy. They sell them on Jonah Pope Designs or you can get them for free at a ton of different places. And then you can just print stuff here and you don't have to know any special skills. That's awesome. So who should buy this? Well, I think anybody that's on a budget or if you don't know if you're gonna like 3D printing or if you're out of space and you just need a small 3D printer, 
this is your little buddy right here. The A1 Mini, they have an A1, they have P1P, P1S, and X1. Like there's multiple different ones to choose from here. I'll link to all of them in the description. You can compare them to find out which best for you. I love this little thing. I told my son I was gonna give it to him when I'm done with it, but I'm gonna have a hard time letting go of this little guy because it is so useful to have this in the shop, especially paired with the X1. Now, if you want to print bigger things like the pack out inserts or stuff like this AMS stand or anything that's gonna take up quite a bit more size or even a larger size box like this red box here, then you are gonna need the 10 inch size printing area. And I would recommend you, depending on your budget and your needs, I think you should probably look at the P1P or even the X1 Carbon. Now here's a question that I had to answer for myself on this purchase. Do I need multicolor printing? In other words, do I need the AMS? It costs about $150, which is not a bad upgrade and it's actually a really good price for what you're getting with that multicolor printing, but do you need it? I personally rarely use it. I was told that by some friends when I bought this, they said, you probably won't use multicolor printing as much as you think, and I don't. Most everything I print is a single color. Now, when you start doing multicolor printing, one of the drawbacks is this thing will clean itself out as it's changing colors multiple times over and over through the print, and that wastes quite a bit of the filament when it cleans it out, and you'll get these little whirly bird things. People call them poop. It poops out these little remnants of the color as it's changing over, and it'll do that some on single colors, but not nearly as much as multicolor. So it's just one of those things you need to ask yourself, am I going to be printing characters and parts and now, things like that that require multiple colors or am I satisfied with just one single color at a time? Personally, for most things in a shop setting, single colors is perfectly fine. If you wanna know what it's like to have never used a 3D printer and use one for the very first time, I did a video on this machine right there, the X1 Carbon. Go watch that video. You'll see my first impressions as a brand new person to 3D printing. Never used one before. Go check it out.